Hello, and welcome to an update on ACTI, EDUCAUSE's Advanced Core Technologies Initiative, and some examples of its recent work. I'm Greg Jackson, Vice President at EDUCAUSE, and I oversee ACTI. We launched ACTI in the fall of 2010 to provide a venue for staff from member colleges and universities to gather around specific technology challenges for the future. The goal was to bring collective wisdom and experience to bear on these challenges, especially by learning from the work and thinking of pioneers. We hoped to smooth technological progress. ACTI's charter members included over 60 member institutions from 29 states. There are currently five active working groups focusing on cyber infrastructure, communication and mobility, data management, web frameworks, and optimization. Rather than give you overviews of all five groups, let me share with you a bit about two recent projects. First, Communications Technologies, the focus of the ACTI Communication, Collaboration, and Mobility Working Group, which we call CCM for short. CCM did a survey last fall on integrated communications technology, looking at three main areas, voice platforms and services, integration with other platforms, and opinions and forecasts. A surprise emerged. Here's the surprise. Many colleges thought they were done thinking about traditional phones, but they may need to think again. Responding to questions about voice over IP, about a third of the survey respondents said that they weren't looking to move to VoIP for another two years. Another 16% didn't have it in their plans at all. That is, extrapolating a bit, half of all colleges and universities may remain dependent on traditional systems at least two years into the future. And that may prove to be a problem, because there's also widespread skepticism that key providers of traditional campus-scale telephone systems will still be in the business very long. Beyond the traditional phone findings, CCM found that there were many impediments and considerable ambiguity around two other important issues, cloud-based communication services and the importance of location services within campus networks. Moving from campus to cloud services and from wired to wireless networks are clearly important trends, but the optimal path remains hard to discern. Second, let's talk about cyber infrastructure, a term often used to describe high-performance technology that is necessary for advanced research and educational applications. ACTI's Campus Cyber Infrastructure Group, CCI, works in this domain. CCI's white paper, What's Next for Campus Cyber Infrastructure, responds to a recent series of NSF reports on national cyber infrastructure. The white paper analyzes the role of campus cyber infrastructure in six major CI areas and recommends directions for effective leadership. For instance, when looking at the NSF report on data and visualization, the paper points out that national trends in data mining, machine learning, and visualization will in due course require campuses to provide infrastructure well beyond that currently available since, and I quote, the campus data infrastructure will be a foundational component for big data analytics. The CCI white paper makes clear that campus cyber infrastructure has an intricate and important relationship to national cyber infrastructure and provides extensive detail why this is so. It's a useful read for any school that is concerned with the future of research and instructional support on our campuses. Several other ACTI projects are moving forward and in some cases are nearing publication. We're always thinking about new projects, too. To keep up on the latest, and especially to get involved, visit the ACTI website, write, or call. ACTI participants will meet at the EDUCAUSE Annual Conference this fall, and again in the spring at the 2013 ACTI Annual Meeting. Please join us.